Hello and welcome to our 15th video. My name is Attaib Abul Yaman. This video is about shortcut for integrating a function y dot its derivative y prime. y dot y prime. We first state what we call as a theorem. It should be a hypothesis, but we called it as a theorem. And the judgment is yours because we're going to prove it. So, for y equal to f of x, the integration of y to the power n dot y prime dx equal to integration of y to the power n dy. Where y here, we are using as the differential variable instead of x. And we are getting rid of y prime. There is no y prime on the right hand side because y prime is embedded in dy as we will see in the examples. And if that is the case, then we can do simple integration of y. So it will be equal to y to the power of its exponent plus 1 divided by the exponent plus 1 plus a constant because this is uh, indefinite integration. Let's take a look at an example. Easiest example is integration of sine x cosine x dx. Since sine x, the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, then we can go ahead and satisfy the right hand side since that is satisfying the left hand side. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we have a function and its derivative dx and the integration. So this satisfies the left hand side. That means we have to satisfy the right hand side too. So let's go ahead and try to satisfy the right hand side. Uh, we will see the left hand side as sine to the power 1. It's just like y to the power n and then cosine x which is y prime dx. So the right hand side must be integration of y to the power n dy. So our y is sine to the power 1 x. It should be d of sine x because y is equal to sine x. So y to the power n dy is sine to the power 1 x d sine x. But if we look and compare the left hand side and right hand side over here, we see that the first element which is sine to the power 1 x is the same but after that we have cosine x dx and on the other side the right hand side we have d of sine x so d of sine x replaced cosine x dx this looks a little bit weird but if we look closely we will understand that d of sine x is embedding cosine x. That means we can use sine x as a differential variable instead of x. And from the theorem, now we know that the right hand side and the left hand side over here equal to the left hand side and the right hand side, I mean, corresponds. There is good correspondence between them, not equal. So if that is the case, then we can also use this as the integration. So the integral of this will be equal to sine square x over 2 plus constant because we have sine to the power 1. So 1 plus 1 will give us 2 and then we have to divide by the new exponent which is 2 plus constant. We're going to go ahead and take a look at another integration but this integration is a little bit, a little bit more interesting. The first is easy. It's not difficult, but it's more interesting because it has a power of 5 and so. So let's go ahead and do integration of tan to the power 5 of x dot 6 square x dx. Once again, since the differentiation of tan x equal to 6 square x, then we have tan x and its derivative. Okay, tan x dot its derivative and that will satisfy the hypothesis so we're going to go ahead and equate the left hand side to the right hand side and we could do that by just 
looking at the fact that we have y equal to tan x y equal to tan x and since tan to the power 5 so y equal to tan x and n is equal to 5 in our case so we have integration of tan to the power 5 x 6 square x dx which similar at the left hand side of this one then the right hand side should be integration of y which is tan x to the power 5 d it should be tan x because y to the power n dy so we're going to go ahead and also put tan to the power 5 of x d tan x once again tan x is replacing 6 square x dx and we also make the same conclusion that tan d of tan x is embedding 6 square x and tan x will be playing the role of the differential variable instead of x in dx and since now we have the left and right hand sides of these same as the left and right hand side of these I mean corresponding to the left and right side of these then we could go ahead and use this right hand side to determine the integral and that right hand side is just tan of 5 plus 1 which is 6 tan 6 divided by 6 plus constant according to the theorem now that we have reached the results for both functions and this is not a proved theorem uh, we have to make sure that we prove that the results are correct because this is an easy function we're going to go ahead and pick up this function and try to find the standard way of this integration and get the results and compare it and the standard way we will use integration by substitution so we use the integration by substitution for the same function which is tan to the power 5 x 6 squared x dx so if we let u is equal to tan x then du will be equal to 6 squared x dx if we solve for dx we will get dx equal to du over 6 squared x and that's but just by dividing both sides by 6 squared x so solving for dx dx will be equal to du over 6 squared x now we will go ahead and do the plugging so we have the original uh, problem is integration of tan to the power 5 x 6 square x dx equal to integration instead of tan we replace it by u so it will be u to the power 5 we leave 6 square x as it is and then we substitute instead of dx its value which du over 6 square x so we'll substitute here du over, over 6 square x now we have 6 square on both sides we just cancel them and then we will be left with a simpler integration which integration of u to the power 5 du and that will give us u to the power 6 over 6 plus constant if we replace u by its equivalent which is tan it will be tan to the power 6x over 6 plus constant and that's equal to integration of tan to the power 5 of x d of tan x by the theorem of course by the theorem now that we use integration by substitution and prove that we get the same answer this suffices our next step is to make some points about what we did and that is to our end point for this which is we're going to show that we can do integration by inspection here and to do so let's just first of all introduce this condition so we're saying if the integrand is the product of a function and its derivative then integrate only the function let's take a look at a simple example so this is the integrand sine x cosine x and sine x and cosine x are a function and its derivative then we're told we could just integrate the function only not the derivative so let's get rid of the derivative and integrate the function as sine x we consider it just as a variable and if we do integrate any variable to the power one it will give us the variable 
to the power 2 over 2. So if we apply this one, sine to the power 1 of x will be sine to the power 1 plus 1, which is 2, divided by 2 plus constant. And we can do the same also for the second function. And we will be getting 1 over 6 tan to the power 6 of x plus constant. But this way it's really controversial because anybody looking at this cross, crossing the cosine over here, it may lead a person to believe that integration of sine x is equal to half sine squared x plus constant. And this is the reason I said it's controversial. And we're going to go ahead and remove this cross from both so that we will leave the actual function when it is integrated then it will give us the correct result over here and same for this one it's just that if a person is really careful and the person has to do the integration of a function and its derivative then by inspection just remove the derivative and use the function as a variable and get the result right away that will cut short the number of steps and also the time to reach the answer i hope that this is interesting for you uh, we've done only the theorem for the trigonometric functions we could also try to do it on a different functions and for that we have to change the theorem and the condition so the condition for this we're saying when f of x equals the square root of g of x then the theorem will be as follows integration of g of x f prime of x equals to integration of g x once again this is also a shortcut instead of having to integrate the products of two functions you just do the integration of a single function let's go ahead and demonstrate it let's take an example where we have integration of 5x dot square root of x to the power 5 minus 4 dx if we let g of x equal to square root of x to the power 5 minus 4 then f of x equal to x to the power 5 minus 4 because f of x is equal to square of g of x and f prime of x will be equal to 5x by the theorem, integration of g of x dot f prime of x dx is equal to integration of g of x dot x. So we're just going to go ahead and say integration of g of x. Because if we do the mapping, this is g of x. So we're doing integration g of x dot f prime of x. That's f prime of x dx. We said it's equal to, we just do integration of g of x. So this is integration and this is g of x. But instead of writing g of x as square root of x to the power 5 minus 4, we just wrote it as parenthesis x to the power 5 minus 4, close the parenthesis, all to the power 1 half. They are the same. Now doing the integration of this is simple. All we got to do is just raise the exponent by 1. It will give us 3 over 2 as the new exponent. And then we have to divide by 3 over 2. And that's equivalent to multiplying by 2 over 3. Plus constant. If we want to get it back, then we could just go ahead and say that this is equal to 2 over 3 as it is. And then we get rid of the 2. And then we introduce back the square root. So it will be square root of, between parentheses, x to the power 5 minus 4 and between parentheses and to power 3 instead of the power 3 over 2 and the factor is the same 2 over 6 that's the answer and that's it for the second shortcut once again if this condition is satisfied instead of integrating a function g of x dot f prime of x we only integrate the function when this condition is satisfied that's it for now we hope you enjoyed the video and we thank you for watching please please 
subscribe our channel we're going to be discussing a few important and interesting things and we want your comments please you have a good day thanks so bye bye